Appreciate you clicking on this video, movie peeps. Let's talk about some movie news. Some of the things we're going to be discussing here today, guys, is Ryan Reynolds speaking out about the recent Deadpool 3 set photo leaks. We have the director of the upcoming live-action Legend of Zelda movie describing what he wants the movie to look like, as well as the first little bits of footage concerning the IT prequel series, Welcome to Derry. This is exciting. That alone with so much more, so you guys know the drill. Leave your opinions down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. It would be the best Christmas present to me. But other than that, let's just dive into the movie news. Okay, starting things off here, something I found kind of cool and should just hype you up if you're a horror fan like me. We had an article come out earlier this week from The Hollywood Reporter that says horror filmmaker Gary Durbin signs first look deal with Screen Gems Sony Pictures. Now don't worry if that name does not sound too familiar to you. This is a man who was responsible for writing the two It movies, all three Annabelle films, directing the third one, Annabelle Comes Home, The Nun, but the most exciting part about this announcement is it's telling us that Sony is wanting to focus in on making more horror movies. The article specifically says here, the move comes as Sony seeks to rebuild Screen Gems, its division focused on lower budget fare into a more productive label, with horror being a top focus. And we have just seen the horror community becoming strong these past couple of years. While we see all the time studios pour in millions of millions of dollars into a big blockbuster only for it to flop, we continue to see that horror movies cost pretty low and sometimes have a great return on their investment because a lot of horror fans will show up if something is good. We talked about this only a couple of months ago that Paramount is on this same train that they hired former DCEU head Walter Hamada to focus on their horror division where they're going to be making a lot more horror movies like Smile 2 being one of them and now even Sony is also wanting a piece of that horror bread. This is cool but it could also be bad. I mean, it's cool in the sense that we're gonna get a lot more horror movies thrown our way, and heck, Sony has been, like, rumored to be wanting to get their hands on, like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre rights. I remember that was a rumor a couple of months back because Netflix wanted to make a sequel to their Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, but Sony apparently, like, wanted to nab those rights and start up the franchise, and this looks like it would make sense with their new initiative. We also heard that Sony's trying to get a new sequel made for I Know What You Did Last Summer with the original cast. So it's cool in that sense, but, you know, studio horror movies always sometimes are a little tamed or a little held back. I think of like the director of the Terrifier movie. After the success of Terrifier 2, he apparently got a whole bunch of deals for the third movie to get a higher budget and a studio behind it, but he knew if he took those studio deals, they'd really censor down Art the Clown, that there would be things he wanted to do that he just would not be allowed to do with a studio behind him. So we could be getting a bunch of dumb, formulaic, been there, done that kind of horror movies, or we could be getting some new upcoming classics, and I, I love this. I love that horror is winning. How do you guys feel about studios now wanting to put a priority on making horror movies? And well, speaking of horror movies, we just got the smallest update concerning the Evil Dead franchise. You know, this year we had Evil Dead Rise, still one of my favorite horror movies of this year. Very happy with that film, and I can't wait to see what's next in that universe. We had Bruce Campbell, who's a frequent producer on those movies, mention what the plan is going forward, and he said here, we're going to do them probably like every two to three years now, rather than every ten years. Campbell said, still showing some concern about not making too many movies, but hey, we've seen with Star Wars, you don't want want to wear people out keep them guessing we've never worn out our welcome with evil dead because we never choke them and you know what he's got a good point i want like the next evil dead movie here but the way he talks about it here it feels like they'll maybe keep on this anthology route with the series where maybe they're not so connected to the previous movie and what's going on there but instead new locations different settings but the same you know necronomicon and deadites taking over body to kill people like that feels like what evil Evil Dead is made for and that could make for a lot of exciting stuff. I mean just the high-rise approach I thought was kind of refreshing. There's obviously so many other locations they could go to and heck one of the things I most want to see is like an Evil Dead movie take place in the future, play more into the time travel elements that the Necronomicon is capable of. So him saying you know they have plans to maybe make one every two to three years, yeah I think that's good. It only takes you know one or two stinkers in a row for us to no longer care but 
Right now, we just had a great one, so I want another one. How are you guys feeling about the Evil Dead franchise wanting to make a new movie every two to three years, and what do you think they could do to keep things fresh? Moving on here, talking about the live-action Legend of Zelda movie, it is crazy to think after the months and years of just always talking about, is Legend of Zelda gonna get some sort of media adaptation, whether animated, TV show, live-action movie, it's all confirmed. We had director Wes Ball do an interview with Entertainment Weekly, and he kind of described his vision and what he hopes the movie to look like. In the article it says here, Ball describes his vision as this awesome fantasy adventure movie that isn't like Lord of the Rings, it's its own thing. I've always said I would love to see a live action Miyazaki movie. That wonder and whimsy that he brings to things, I would love to see something like that and I gotta tell you, that's almost always what I hear people wanting out of a live-action Legend of Zelda movie, or heck, even an animated one. Before we knew this movie was coming, the amount of comments I would get where people would say, Studio Ghibli needs to be the people behind the Legend of Zelda movie. And well, director Wes Ball is wanting to take inspiration from Miyazaki, who makes Studio Ghibli films, and I think that is so exciting that he has that in mind, and also that he even makes that distinction Legend of Zelda is not Lord of the Rings. While I feel like some people, mainly outsiders of it, could definitely get confused with that and just think Legend of Zelda could be another Lord of the Rings world, I love that he knows it's not going to be like that and I'm not going to make it feel like Lord of the Rings. He wants to add wonder, whimsy, and yeah, there's a lot of magical elements to Legend of Zelda, so if he can pull that off, that would be awesome. It's one thing to say it and then go for that look. It's another thing to accomplish it and actually make it work. And I truly am rooting for director Wes Ball to pull it off just because I know there will be a lot of angry Nintendo fans behind him if this thing does not go right. But you hear the director describe what he wants his Legend of Zelda movie to look like. Are you happy with that? Do you like him saying it's not going to be like Lord of the Rings? Let me know your thoughts. All right, something else that was kind of exciting this past week is we were getting a a whole bunch of set photos leaked from Deadpool 3 as they have started production again. I myself was even debating whether to talk about it on the main channel here. I did make a video going through some of the early set photos of the new stuff that got leaked on the Clips channel. So if you really do want to see that stuff and hear my thoughts, I post it there. But I was more hesitant to talk about it here and make a bigger deal about it just because, you know, it sucks to get everything ruined every now and then. And well, that's kind of what Ryan Reynolds addresses with some of these new photos that have been leaked. Ryan Reynolds took to his Instagram and posted this on his story. Surprises are part of the magic of theatrical movies. It's important for us to shoot the new Deadpool film in real, natural environments using practical effects as opposed to making the movie indoors and digitally. Telephoto lenses continue to spoil surprises and create a difficult situation for everyone. Here's hoping some of the websites and social channels hold back showing images before they're ready. The film is built for audience joy and our highest hope is to preserve as much of that magic as possible for the finished film and the big screen. Part of the reason people post spoilers is because they're excited. I realize these aren't real world issues and it's firmly in the good problems bucket. I love making this movie. So honestly, pretty great statement from Ryan Reynolds there. And there's even a couple of things we could take from that. This is exactly why a lot of Marvel movies today maybe kind of look like crap because they're surrounded with all this secrecy, all this hush, hush, quiet, no one must see it. So all the movies get filmed in a small studio locked away where every wall is colored green for the visual effects. And it feels like because of that secrecy and that hiding of stuff, a lot of Marvel films just suffer in terms of visuals. Like, like, cinematography wise you just don't even get shots of a character standing in a desert or over a field looking at stuff like it's just so obviously green screen but ryan reynolds and the team thought sure stuff might get spoiled but at the end of the day our movie is gonna look right because we filmed it in an actual desert in an actual location there's not gonna be green screens and stuff like that thrown out there and so it's kind of cool to see them willing to take this risk of some of the surprises being spoiled and again if you're just someone that's like well what are these spoilers i'm gonna try and respect ryan reynolds here now even though he'd probably be ashamed of me for talking about it on the clip channel i'm sorry ryan but it's all the stuff that we had already been seeing earlier this year with deadpool and wolverine 
screen in what looks like the void from Loki, but now it's included a couple of villains from past X-Men movies, and these villains are riding almost like Mad Max vehicles, but these vehicles have certain special Easter egg connections. Yeah, it, it's hard not for fans to look at that and not spread it around everywhere. I mean, for me, I just opened my timeline on Twitter and it was right then and I was like, oh, that would have been nice to see the first time around, but now I'm seeing it and I'm still excited to see that. But it's also nice that Ryan Reynolds doesn't get like absolutely furious. He understands this is a good problem, that this is just people being excited for the movie, creating buzz. It's just cool that even though they knew this would ruin a couple Easter eggs and surprises, and I'm sure this movie is going to have millions of it, they risked it all just so that this film could look great. And for that, Deadpool 3 already has major respect in my opinion but this is where i throw it off to you guys how do you feel about ryan reynolds response and if you have seen some of those photos they excite you do you care some of that stuff was ruined love to know but okay bringing us here to our first little bits of footage for the it prequel series welcome to Derry, which we have all been really excited for and wanting to get more information on last we had heard with this project is that unfortunately because of the hollywood strike and things going on they had to delay the show to 2025 however we knew that they did get some stuff filmed whether it was a couple of episodes or maybe even half the show because we did get set photos of the town of Derry with even posters of little kids that have gone missing andy muschetti on said just like exciting things well today warner brothers decided to release this kind of sizzle reel that had a bunch of footage from their upcoming shows that'll be part of their streaming service max one of them did include our first little couple bits of footage for the penguin series which yeah absolutely hyped for can't wait to dive back into the matt reeves batman universe let me play that for you the world ain't built for guys like us you ain't seen what i can do but the Penguin did already have a trailer, and we got an idea of what that might look like. We had no trailer footage, though, for the Welcome to Dairy series, and, well, let me just play the little snippets that they had there. This ain't America. This is Dairy. Alright, so I know that wasn't a whole lot, but it does confirm some things that we've been hearing about Welcome to Derry because there have been some details released. All we have heard from this show so far is that it'll be taking place in the 1960s and it'll focus on Pennywise and sort of his origin or maybe just like the first time he starts taking down victims in Derry. We had heard that there would be a group of four friends sort of resembling the Losers Club from the original It and that they would be looking for a friend that's gone lost. The immediate thing people want to do though is call it a stranger things ripoff and i guess them riding bikes in the trailer doesn't help those allegations but you have to remember stranger things took that inspiration from stephen king you can't be ripping off if you were the original inspiration of that but i realize stranger things has gotten to that point where it's just the number one thing you think about so you just think Stranger Things ripoff. But the other storyline in here that we've been hearing details about that seems to be confirmed from this footage is of this black army man who's a pilot that is also going to be a central focus of the show. We heard early on from a production listing of a character that was described as a black male lead in their 30s to play a patriotic army man. He lives in Derry in the 1960s, which is a hard life even before the nightmare of Pennywise. He's in the middle of the community trying to bring people together in an unlikely time he's a pilot and plays a major role in welcome to dairy i'm assuming he's the character that we see here seeing things out in the woods along with our first little hint to pennywise himself this red balloon popping up it just sucks that we just still don't have any confirmation or know about about how much pennywise will actually be part of this show you gotta think he's a central focus of it but bill skarsgård hasn't confirmed his involvement in there we don't know if another actor is planning to play him or what they're trying to do there with this red balloon pennywise has to be a big part we just don't know how much still though it's just finally cool to get some sort of footage know that it's real know that it's happening and kind of have high expectations for this show i want it to be good the only thing i'd be worried about is we're not going to get a lot of pennywise in his clown form since he is sort of a shapeshifter I wouldn't be surprised if maybe a lot of the show is Pennywise turning into different sort of monsters or dead people like what we see of this kid looking over a lake and getting a hand on him. But yeah, that's what we have right now for the Welcome to Dairy series, our first little bit of footage. What do you think about it? But that is all movie news we can have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.